You might remember that we've looked at maximum power transfer in DC circuits before. I'd now like to look at the situation in AC circuits. If we have a source with a complex impedance and we have a load with a complex impedance, then what's the relationship between the source and load impedance which maximizes power transfer from the source to the load? That's what we're going to look at here in this video. I'd first like to find the RMS value of the current which passes through this circuit. Let's assume that the source has an RMS voltage of V sub RMS. The RMS voltage and current are related by Ohm's law, where we need the absolute value of Z, where Z is the total impedance of this circuit. Let's break up both of these impedances into resistances and reactances. We know that our source will have a certain resistance R and a certain reactance X. Likewise, our load will have a certain real part, R sub L, and a certain reactive part, X sub L. If the load is capacitive, then the reactance X sub L could be a negative number. We can find the magnitude of a complex number by taking the square root of the sums of squares of the real and imaginary components. The average power delivered to the load in this circuit will be I squared times the load resistance, where this is an RMS value for the current. I've already found the RMS value for the current, so I just need to square it in order to substitute it into this equation. If we stare at this equation for a moment, and in particular look at the denominator, we can ask ourselves the following question. What should happen to the denominator if we want this power to be maximum? Well, the power will increase as the denominator gets lower. So we want the denominator to be a very small number. Power is maximized when the denominator reaches zero, but it's impossible for the denominator to reach zero, given that the source resistance is probably fixed and the load resistor has to be a number larger than zero. However, if we look over here at the reactants, we know that it is possible for this sum to be zero. That happens when XL equals negative X sub S. Negative reactances are possible, negative resistances are not. We can make a reactance negative by just changing its character, for example, from inductive to capacitive or from capacitive to inductive. So if we have a source that's inductive and we want maximum power transfer, then we should choose a load that's capacitive and vice versa. Once this term reaches zero, we're left with a formula for average power that resembles an equation that we've already dealt with in the video where we looked at maximum power transfer for DC circuits. Once the equation contains only real numbers, we already know that the load resistor should equal the source resistor in order to achieve maximum power transfer. Because the real parts need to be equal to achieve maximum power transfer, but the imaginary parts should be additive inverses of one another, we effectively can say that the impedances should be complex conjugates. So if you have a reactive circuit or a circuit with complex numbers for the source and the load, then the way to achieve maximum power transfer is that the load should be the complex conjugate of the source. Keep in mind that for efficient power transfer between source and load, the same conditions that applied in the DC circuits still apply for AC circuits as well. We want a source that's as perfect as possible. We want the source impedance or the source resistance to be as small as possible, and we want the load impedance or the load resistance to be as large as possible. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.